Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now my session actually started a crack of dawn first thing this morning and the whole aim of the session was supposed to be going to areas where I found big pike in the past and just targeting those areas and trying to catch the biggest pike I possibly can do from this river. Because this year I have been traveling further afield and I found some lovely pike, probably five or six miles bike down the river. Um, I decided to save those areas for now. Um, and two of those areas were, one where I caught that big pike on the fly rod, which was a pike probably getting on towards 20 pound, maybe between 18 and 20 pound. And another area was an area where I caught a 15 or 16 pound pike at the back end of summer beginning of autumn and I caught it on a big swim bait and both those swims were both in about 100 to 150 yard stretch very close to one another fantastic areas loads of tree cover and the big pike were holding in those areas and I'd save that for now this time of year when the pike were their fattest and you could potentially get a PB so I headed there this morning first thing and this is exactly how my session went I'll show you right now Of course we're after big fish today, we're fishing heavy duty, Abu Garcia beast 50 to 200 gram rod and I'm fishing large baits, mostly going to be casting the brand new sick flanker 20 centimetre, I've just got it so hopefully I can get some teeth marks in it and then I've got some other big baits as well like the Mick Pike and also the beast Keltel too, hopefully we'll get a big in. I'm a bit wounded, I spent a lot of time this session up to this point just trying to find the location of where I caught that big pike the one that was probably like between 18 and 20 pound on the fly and i've just realized this is it but in that video can you remember the trees were overhanging the water there was loads of cover and the pike was hiding right behind a tree well that tree there was the one and they've chopped it all down yeah and they've chopped this one down and they chopped the ones upstream down so that none of the branches are even touching the water so there's no cover whatsoever and of course there's no fish here I've been moaning about it all day, but whatever. Let's get cracked on with some fishing and find some cover, I think. I've just come downstream of that tree that's been chopped down. Well, the branches have been cut off to try and find the big pike. And I've come down to a remnant of some stuff that's been left in the water after the tree cutting. And there's a pike behind that. Probably come down from the trees. It's not a big one, I don't think. We'll find out. I can just see its tail. It's come for it. Got it. Oh, man. <laughs> What a hit. There we go. Lovely pike, probably about four pound. Crushed that perch pattern. Sick flanker. Looks a sharp. Beautiful pike. I could say probably about four pound or so. Put the chopping mat quickly. Saves getting the net wet. We're saving that for the big ones. Oop. Not the most graceful release, but there he goes. Beautiful little pike. Let's go. Oh, scared of pike. Oh no. I cast down. This is the same spot I've just caught that pike from. Obviously after the, the tree cutting. Just up from me. There's another cast downstream into a lot of slack water. And we scared a pike straight away. I must have landed it right on its back. I just cast downstream into a slack and this fish went bolting out. Might be hard to sneak him though. If he's not too scared. There we go, we got it, we got it. It's not a bad fish, it's not a bad fish. Oh boy, it feels like a good fish. I could be the double we're after. I'm just chasing doubles today. Although it isn't a heavy flow. Oh, it's not very big. Ah, it's way smaller than I thought. Everyone laugh. There's me shouting about it being a decent fish. It's all right though, I'll take it. Bigger than the last one we just caught. Once again, crush that bait, exactly the same bait. Still a flank of perch pattern. Within five casts of the last fish. There we go. There we go, another beautiful pike. Another one, identical to the last one. It's definitely a different fish though, because the last one had a scar just here and this one hasn't. But yeah, I thought it was a big one. It slammed it so hard and in that flow it felt solid. 
obviously it's a very fast flowing river so it felt bigger than it was all right let's get them slipped back i've got water in my welly boots now ready steady go see you later buddy oh we'll see if we can find some more like we said we're after big pike so even though they're great fun that's not the target for the day but at least i know that this bait is going to get the job done two pike in five casts in this swim Hopefully that's a sign of good things to come. And if we find a big pike, hopefully that means we're going to get absolutely nailed. Just got a little bit of a tip for you guys. If you don't want your bait going nose down with the extra added weight, when we're adding extra weight to our baits, so I've got the Savage Gear balls on there. Um, if you put these on the front of the bait, which is a standard way of doing it, your bait will sink nose down, which can be fine, especially if you're fishing deep water and you want to get the bait down fast. Um, but the way I'm doing it on shallow water is I like to rig it underneath. So actually maybe even on the split ring of the hook on the front one or the back one that way it sinks more naturally down horizontal and when you pause it in the water it doesn't go nose down it just sinks down like that and i'm just a little tip for you it might help it might not you might like the idea you might think it's rubbish let's catch some fish i can't believe it can you remember you won't be able to remember back towards the summertime beginning of autumn I came out fishing with big laws and I had to go down through the brambles, which was this swim here, get down to the water, I had to climb into the water and cast behind a big tree. And I caught a pike about 16 pound. It's gone. The EA has cut them all down, all of them. Every tree that was touching the water, they've chopped everything. I've been biking for miles. And every time I get to a swim that I know has fish, it's gone. They've all gone. I can't believe it. All right, so I've snuck now to somewhere where maybe I am or maybe I'm not allowed to fish. I'm not going to disclose that right now, but I'm a bit annoyed about the state of the river. So we're going to have a couple of casts in this spot before we move on. Oh, there we go. Fish on, fish on. As soon as it hit the water. <laughs> not a very big fish. Up this one in the water, I think. Oh, there we go. Well, we're gonna want to keep in the water down there anyway, weren't we? What if there's another one in that area where that one came from? There we go, another one straight after. Absolutely crushed it. That one took it loads, but it ain't coming off. A little bit bigger as well. Oh, you soaked me. Absolutely crushed it. Look at that. Got a mouthful of soil at the same time. Risky business, that, isn't it? Oh, yeah, probably a pack of five pound. A bit bigger than that last one that just took it. I thought there might be one of the next cast out, and there was. We'll not get the big camera out for it because we're after some big bike. We'll let this one go. So, the area where I was hoping to find big fish doesn't exist anymore. It's like 200 yards stretch of all the trees been cut down which is where the big fish used to live so i'm just on my way home now i'm actually going to regroup and come back out again this afternoon um, and try a completely different area of the river but on the way home there's a few areas where we've got a bit of slack water with trees about like two three miles away from the other area where the big fish used to be though fingers crossed i can maybe get one more out on the way back and then we'll come out again and hopefully try and find a big one this afternoon made me jump absolutely crushed it 
really nice stocky pike. I was on the way home and I decided to hit a spot which has some trees. It's one of the few areas it does. This will probably come down later on in the season. And uh, I've gone and caught a beautiful pike. You find the cover, you find the fish. It's as simple as that. I'm actually not gonna net him. He's got one of the hooks loose. And the amount of times I've had pike, it hurt themselves more from fresh around in the net. Outweighs the amount of fish that I've had injured hand lining them. See, that hook was loose. If that was caught in the net and thrashing, could easily tear the jaw. Let's very quickly get him unhooked. There we go. Because if you just do it by hand, it helps the fish out. Let's give him a rest. We'll let him go. It's a beautiful pike, though. Possibly the biggest one so far. He's missing a fin. I'll definitely recognise that one. There we have it. Beautiful pike. Probably about five or six pound. I'll give it five, five pound. Just on the way home, actually, I was going to go home regroup and decide what I was going to do this afternoon and go to a different area and I just so happened to see behind me look a group of trees on the way back like I've said a million times before if you find the slack water and you find the cover on fast flowing rivers you find the fish when the cover is taken away the fish have to move elsewhere so I found a bit of cover and we got one more fish on the way home so like I said we're going to head home now sort of gather our thoughts decide where I'm going to go next and we'll head out this afternoon pick out a few more fish but Brilliant result to end this morning session anyway. So as you can see, I was pretty, pretty gutted. Um, basically this entire maybe 150, 200 yard stretch of river had been completely removed of the trees. Any tree that was even slightly touching the water had been completely removed by the environment agency altogether. So we've come out this afternoon now um, in the hopes of going to a completely different stretch of river, which I haven't actually targeted pike in, in probably about two years. I fished for perch up here, but I've not actually fished for any pike. So there is a chance there could be a big one up here. We've got, I know, two hours of light left. Let's crack on. The bait we're gonna be going out that with to start off with is the sick flanker seems to be doing really well with that this morning the pike was smashing that perch pattern so we're starting off with that they've got some other big baits as well and fingers crossed we're going to put some fish on the bank so i've noticed tom and sean using the sick flanker quite a bit in their recent videos too but one thing i have noticed is i've caught way more fish on it than they have and i can't think of any reason as to why that could be nice Now I wasn't supposed to be fishing here. I was going to be scooting up to an area I've not fished in a couple of years. But I've spotted a pike on the opposite bank, so I got to cast out and I can't just ignore a nice juicy pike. So going out with the same bait I've been fishing this morning. It's got lots of teeth marks in it now. We'll see if we can catch it. Zella Flanker, 20 centimetre. There we go, we got it, we got it. Oh, it's a different fish. God, what a hit. It's a really hard. It's not a very big pipe, but in that flow, man, you need the heavy setup to be able to pull them up the current. He crushed it. <laughs> awesome. There we go. Absolutely crushed it yet again. He weren't coming off. Oh, that's a pike. Big pike. I just had a big pike follow that in then. I say big. It was definitely a double. I'm not sure how big, but it was definitely a good fish. It was definitely the sort of size we're after today. So I'm going to very quickly change baits and see if I put on one of the biggest baits I've got, I might be able to get it. I think I'm going to go with my absolutely battered and bruised McPike that's had so many fish on it, including some of the biggest fish I've caught this year. I'm going to go on with that, I think. I've gone well upstream now. I want to give the fish loads of time to follow it because I've followed it twice now. Sometimes it's just a case of time. Just letting them follow it for as long as possible until they decide to take it. Let's 
followed it again. Oh, he spooked it. Oh, he spooked off. I know he's going to come back. Right down there, guys, there's a pike about maybe 14 pounds, 13, 14 pounds, maybe a little bit bigger. He's gone for every single bait I've cast out, followed it in like an absolute unit, but won't take it. So what we're going to do is move up the river, um, and then when it gets starts to get dark and we have to start heading home, we're going to hit this spot right before dark, and hopefully that fish takes it. It's a nice fish. You know what? I'm not ashamed to say I'm a bit of a gammy git. Whenever I find a dead fish, especially a pike anyway, um, in the local river or canal, I tend to catch them, drag them out and take a look at what they've died of, see if it's angling error. That way I need to know if I need to uh, make myself a tutorial video again. Let's take a look. We've got a pike here. It's not looking too good. It's dead, so it's definitely not looking too good. But uh, we'll see what it died of anyway. Let's get my hooks out of this deceased pike. It is a recently-ish died fish because, I mean, look, it's still got the colour in its eyes. The thing is, it's got a completely smashed up, broken gill rakers. I think two of them are smashed up and broken. Um, I'm just going to check to make sure there wasn't a wire trace left down there. I don't think there is. But I think what's happened is someone's had it and they've potentially could have been an accident or it could have been on purpose um ripped all the gill raker and that's what happens pike are very sensitive fish and if you damage the gill rakers like that then essentially there's a good very good chance they could die because they need those to be able to extract oxygen from the water and from looking at this fish there's no wounds to the actual body of the fish whatsoever the only bit of damage there is is to the inside of the gills so i'm guessing that's been the cause of death um not this, i'm like 90 percent certain it was definitely an angler um but whether that was by accident or on purpose, someone ripping the hooks out, or if it was just accidental, uh, playing an aggressive pike, got it in the net and it potentially just tore, I don't know, but eh, it's a shame, never mind, we don't like to see it. And I always like to check those sort of fish out just to make sure um, that there's, there wasn't any hooks down the throat or anything left, because I have found that before. I've found dead pike on a few occasions that have had wire traces stuck down in the stomachs. So that's a shame. We'll leave them there on the bank because there's lots of foxes and stuff around here. So if I leave it on the bank, the fox will come along and eat it anyway just be left to rot in the, the margin of the river. Right, I've got to be home in 15 minutes. It takes me about 20 minutes from here to get home, so I'm already, <laughs> I'm already running late. And just see after giving it a bit of time and the light levels have dropped even more that maybe he wants to feed now got it oh, oh. yeah this bait was absolutely screwed but i don't think that's the reason it came off i just didn't i don't know the hook set weren't good enough i guess you look at this bait <laughs> <laughs> no wonder the screw came out <laughs> god damn it pike smashed it as well i knew if i came back when it got darker i'd have a chance of catching that fish and now i think that's it i might just give it one more go with the sick flanker and then i think we'll go home so we got so close to missing that good pike we missed earlier took the bait i struck into it lost it and i realized the rigging i was using the shallow rigging was actually the only one i've got with barbless hooks on and i don't actually use it because i have such a bad hook up and land ratio and well that just happened right there and then with the barbed setup i landed every single fish i think i've hooked on it and i lost it I lost the fish as soon as i put on barbless rigging but never mind that's what happens in fishing but we had a fantastic day really i've caught a few fish it was sad seeing the swims this morning absolutely destroyed by the ea but i still managed a couple of small pike out there but i'm afraid i think some of the bigger pike have moved further afield moved away from the more popular areas now where all the trees have been cut down which is a shame but thank you guys for watching i'll leave a link to all the stuff i've used today including that sick flanker down in the description below which has nailed me so many pike today so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe if you want to like the video if you liked it and i'll catch you guys later